Proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth, the Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, and with your spirit. A very warm welcome to all of you joining in this celebration of Mass on the sixth Sunday of Eastertide here uh, in the Cathedral at Arundel. It's wonderful that uh, you are joining in this celebration as we continue to rejoice in the resurrection of the Lord and also at this point in the Easter season begin to look forward to the Feast of the Ascension and the celebration of Pentecost. Whenever we come into the Lord's presence, we are aware and conscious of our sins. And so that we might be worthy to join in this celebration, we seek for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, the God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honour of the risen Lord. 
and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people were united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they, have heard, they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them for themselves. There were many, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, and they went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous your deeds. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Before you, all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name. Come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river dry shod. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold his love from me. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord Christ in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with courtesy and respect and with a clear conscience, so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Why, Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins, died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, that spirit of truth whom the world can never receive, since it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he is with you, he is in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come back to you. In a short time the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will understand that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be one who loves me. And anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and show myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our time of lockdown continues as we continue as a society and indeed as the whole world to combat the COVID-19 virus. There will be many amongst us who are finding the isolation increasingly difficult. And there are many anxieties too about how we will come out of this difficult time and indeed, when? And some of that is quite uncertain. I know that when it is safe to do so, and possible for us to do so, churches will begin to reopen. Probably initially for private prayer, and then in due course for the celebration of Mass and the other great liturgies that take place in our churches, albeit perhaps for quite a while with measures of social distancing in place. And it will be necessary for us to continue to persevere in the great spirit of patience and forbearance that has been shown in these recent weeks. I would like to take this opportunity to thank everybody across the family of our diocese for the way in which we have approached these very difficult times. For the wonderful witness to our healthcare workers, Thursday by Thursday in particular, when masses are being celebrated around the country for them, and on those occasions each week when we come out to clap and cheer for those working, as it were, in the front line uh, to combat uh, the COVID-19 virus. Each and every day, and again at this Mass, which I offer for um, the whole family of the diocese, my prayers are very much with those families who have lost loved ones, remembering to those who have died that the Lord will welcome them into his kingdom. Today's Gospel reading provides us with a wonderful vision. 
the Lord speaks to us of the things that are to come. Not just in the next world, but in the present one. But that wonderful line, you will see me because I live and you will live. It's a wonderful promise for us. That extraordinary reality that because the one who has risen from the dead is indeed alive, so our life is in him. And because we have seen him, so we see the Father. That is the destiny of every person who has ever lived and who will ever live. To live the life that is given to us in Christ. And there is no greater way to live than that. But we encounter this life here in this world too. And in our readings today, our sights turn a little bit towards the days and the weeks that are ahead. Because in today's Gospel, Jesus talks to his friends about the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that came down upon the young church on that day of Pentecost. That Spirit that we see active in today's first reading as the Spirit is given to the people of that Samaritan town. The Advocate, the Spirit of Truth, who is given to us and has been given to us. We live our lives as baptized Christians, as baptized Catholics. We live our lives caught up in the love of God that exists in the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son and Spirit. And we receive the gift of that Spirit, very particularly at our confirmation. And we know too that the Holy Spirit guides the church. The Spirit is active. It's not so many weeks ago, I suppose, that so many gathered in this beautiful cathedral for the rite of election, preparing for baptism, confirmation, reception into full communion with the church. Although those people had not been baptized or indeed confirmed, the Holy Spirit was active in them because it's the Holy Spirit who prompts us, who encourages us, who speaks to us in the, that the inmost parts of our being, enabling us to be open to the gift of faith. The Spirit is indeed at work in the church. The Spirit is indeed at work in those who are called to the experience of faith, to experience of that life with the one who lives in us, who dwells in us, and who calls us to dwell in him, that we might see the Father. This is a message of immeasurable hope, And perhaps at this moment in the history of our world, we are in need of hope. A recognition that our reality does not simply lie in us, but in the one who loves us, who gives us life, and who calls us to be with him. This hope must produce in us a response. We can think of so many ways during the course of this COVID-19 pandemic and at other times too, when we see that response in our brothers and sisters and when we know that we have responded in our own lives. Anyone who loves me keeps my commandments. And the keeping of those commandments given us by Christ 
the twofold command of love, to first of all love God, and because of the love that we find in him, we are then able to love our neighbour. That twofold command of love is what the Lord calls out from each and every one of us. And we are able to live that out more fully the more we are open to the presence of the Spirit who dwells in us. And so today, as we look to a future which is perhaps in some ways uncertain, a future that will most definitely be a little different, let us pray that we may be ever conscious that we live because the Lord lives. Let us be conscious that he calls us to live out his commandments. And let us know, let us be firm in that truth that the Spirit is at work in us, showing us the way and prompting us to do all that is good. So today we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus says to his disciples, I shall ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. United in the Spirit, we pray. We pray for Pope Francis and hear his call to invite the faithful never to fall into despair but to trust in Jesus, in the knowledge that he is always at our side and there is a place awaiting us in heaven. We pray for all catechists and teachers adapting to work in new circumstances, that their words and actions may be faithful witnesses to God's love as they continue to minister the truth of the gospel. We pray for those caring for others, in particular those who care for the sick, the dying and the bereaved, that they and those whom they serve are strengthened through love and compassion. We pray for all faith communities in, that are enduring long-term changes to their worship in order to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. We pray for all who are sick. May they be granted good care and a return to health.
We pray for those who have died recently, in particular for Father Douglas Perkins and Father Christopher Sexton. We seek the prayers of Mary, our mother, as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, we believe that Christ is the one who gives us life. Hear our prayers, and by the Spirit's power, pour into our hearts the life of the risen Saviour, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
for with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philip Howard, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. 
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before giving the final blessing today, thank you to all of you who have joined um, in this celebration of Mass uh, through live streaming. Um, have a peaceful and blessed Sunday as we continue to rejoice in the Lord's resurrection at this time of, of, the, of the year. Uh, this coming Thursday is, of course, Ascension Day. Uh, and the uh, Mass this Thursday uh, for um, uh, those working in health care is being offered each week, as you know, in a different cathedral. Um, and this week's Mass will be offered in Shrewsbury Cathedral by Bishop Mark Davis. So you, might, may, you may wish to join in that celebration through live streaming uh, on Thursday um, as part of our, our prayer and thanksgiving for all those uh, who are giving of themselves and in such tremendous service to those who are sick at this time and to their families. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption, and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.